Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to NBA 2K17. Today, got a little bit of a different video for you. No gameplay today. No, let's get some gameplay today. Today, we are going to be going over my NBA 2K18 wish list. My wish list I want to see for the My Team season coming up in 2K18. So these are just my suggestions, my input, and what I hope to see from the mode this year. And, you know, I definitely feel like I need to express this because the community is concerned. We are concerned as a whole because why? 2K has announced that they are going into esports, which I am fully for. I think it's a great step forward for any type of sports gaming. We are definitely the minority when it comes to esports. I know there's FIFA, I know there's Madden, I know there's a couple of other different games that do it, but as far as the bigger picture in esports, we are at the bottom, and PC gaming and the role-playing games, they're all above us. So I think it's great. Any step forwards in that is perfect. But it also raises concerns on how much extra time and how many extra changes they can actually make to other game modes, especially my team. Do they just give us a draft mode and say, well, that should be enough to sustain them for the year? Frankly, I don't think it'd be enough. But I have wrote down some suggestions, some input. Constructive criticism is the word I want to use here. And this is not a shot at anybody at 2K. I love the game. I play it every day. I'm not going to be the guy here that says, you know, everything sucked because great great strides this year we got a lot more players this year we got a lot more content this year um i you know different gameplay this year they make strides every year to try to improve it sometimes it always isn't enough to make make the game mode necessarily last longer but they did make changes and they actually did try to do a couple things to make the game last longer but still fell a little short so I'm not going to talk too much about, you know, why we're here, why we're doing this list. Let's just hop into the list again. Hopefully you agree with some of these things. And I know we're only about a month and a half away. Hopefully some of these things, if not already implemented, can hurry and be implemented in the 2K18 My Team season. Let's do it. All right, coming up on my first topic, and it's kind of a broad topic. It goes off into so many different things, is longevity. We say it every year, the game mode's got to be longer. And granted, they did that this year. It was not just the single season of my team online. No, there were three different tiers with different rewards in each tier. And that's great. I thought that was great. It definitely made my team online last a few months longer. Not many, but a few. But at the end of the day, still felt a little bit short. This is one question. If I had one question to ask any 2K staff member, if I was invited or able to talk to one 2K dev and saying, what are we supposed to do in my team after you beat my team online? What is the purpose of me continuously wanting to upgrade my team after I've beaten my team online? Because frankly, every year leading up to 2K17, I beat my team online in one month. One month. I'm the guy that first night I open up the package, I build my bronze squad or I buy a few packs, build and what I feel is a capable squad and I take it online first night. I don't waste any time. So usually I get the game mode done pretty quick as far as my team online. This month, this year it took me about two and a half months, three months, I don't remember exactly. But other years it usually only took me a month. At that point, what purpose is this game mode for me? Why do I need to continue upgrading my team? Because frankly, I've already beaten the ultimate mode. The My Team Online mode. Granted, there's Domination, there's Gauntlet, Slash Blacktop. They've changed the name every... Well, for the two years they've had it, they've changed it every year. But they've changed the name, and I don't need a stacked team for Gauntlet. I don't need a stacked team for Domination. So, frankly, any packs that come out after you beat My Team Online are irrelevant unless you have something to sustain it. So, there are a few suggestions that I need to go ahead and mention. Um, they've been mentioned in the past, but necessarily haven't been received or implemented, so I gotta bring them up again. One, leaderboards. I know, I don't know how hard it is to implement a leaderboard for multiple, I know they got one for Park, and they got one for Pro-Am, why can't we just get a little leaderboard for my team? I know that you don't even have to add anything with it. I don't think you get any special perks for being at the top of the leaderboard for Park, it's more just bragging rights. Granted, I think you get a few segments, maybe on NBA 2K TV. I don't know, I don't pay attention that close to that series as I'd like to, but I just think it when you're not when you beat my team online, then it always gives you something to strive for to get your rank higher so you can have better bragging rights. 
Granted, if that is not something that you can implement, is it too much data for all the other leaderboards, all the other game modes that it can't simply, can't simply, can't simply handle that much strain on their servers, then I have another suggestion. Updated rewards. Updated rewards, where the first pink diamond that you could get in the game was Tim Duncan, other than pink diamond Isaiah that you could get from the blacktop. So the first achievable pink diamond is Tim Duncan. That's great. Frankly, it wasn't a card or a player I would have chosen for the top reward for the ultimate grind of my team online. But hey, it's, a, it's not a bad card. It's okay. But I think put it in there for three months. After the three months, change the reward up. Change it. Restart the my team online and change it up. Throw a new player ultimate pink diamond reward card in there. Or another card. It doesn't even have to be pink diamond reward. It's just a cool card. But make it players that we actually want. Why is it we always get shafted for grinding the game, but they're always players that necessarily are cards that... I know that there are some diehard players out there that like some of these cards, but no one really wants the Kevin McHale. No one wants Tim Duncan. No one wants Isaiah Thomas. These are all relatively less exciting players granted they were all great they're all hall of famers all legends and they all respectively were great in real life but in this game they're not players that we're necessarily excited for i never saw anybody ever get excited and say oh my god isaiah thomas is coming out with a new card great no it's just, the excitement's just not there and i feel like every time every year um we get players that are less and less exciting for reward cards so i feel like updating the reward cards um, which is something that they did with another game mode in the weekly challenges. Why couldn't they do that similar with My Team Online? Or a continuous reward that once you beat My Team Online, every time you repeat, you get 50k MT. You get 20k MT, at least a good amount. I'd say 50k MT is fair enough. I mean, to grind and go, you know, undefeated through the pink diamond mode, that is an achievement because there is so much cheese on there and... Granted, if you make it through winning them all, I think 50k is a nice little healthy reward. But then you gotta think about people that would boost and abuse the system. And I think what they got right now is good because it's hard to match up with friends and different things like that in the mode. So I think one of the two things, add leaderboards. If you add leaderboards, that right there just makes the game playable all year. Because then you can consistently try to get to the top and may maybe throw throw the top 500 players because you got to think of how many people actually play this game hundreds of thousands of people play this game mode. you know make the top 500 get a special card or something like that that would make it nice and want you to actually play the game granted you'd have to figure out some sort of way to stop boosting and i think they've got a nice little thing here where if you quit or you throw the game that it like knows that you're set it senses that and you know it gives it, it bans it gives you a soft ban for like 15 minutes or an hour or something like that if you quit or something like that that definitely that definitely makes you not want to quit because i've unfortunately been struck with that ban a couple times but i definitely think those are two things to help make the game longevity wise last a little bit longer let's move on to the next topic all right next one is easy short and sweet no more colored courts no more colored courts. I'm all for customization of the court of the basketball. No more colored courts. Just make it so you can change the wood color from light, medium, dark, very dark, whatever. No more purple courts. No more green courts. I don't care. I get it. I know you're trying to add customization to the game. That's fine. I'm all for it, but the colored courts have got to go. Nobody likes them. They're super aids and frankly, it's just not basketball I know there are a few courts out there in the world that are colored, but for the majority Let's just keep it to different tones of wood white dark medium, etc No more colored courts. I can't be more clear about that. It's super short and easy. Get rid of it It's annoying as hell. No one likes them. I'm up for everything else the customization of the logos that go on the court, everything like that stays the same. Just no more colored courts. I don't want to run any more purple courts. No more all black courts. No more all white Christmas snow courts. Nothing. Just nice little wood courts. You can change everything else. Just no more colors. That one's easy enough. All right, another easy topic is going to come down to another multiplayer mode in Play With Friends. I think it's a great mode. I think it's awesome that you want us to encourage to play with people that we know and go up against them in a competitive game format, and that's great. 
But however, there is a problem with this. It is set to settings that not necessarily everybody wants to play on. And my example for that is that it's on all-star difficulty. To me, it makes absolutely no sense to practice, to play with your friends in a game that is not going to be the game that you're playing when you go onto my team online. To me, this mode needs to have all the settings of the other game modes as far as team up. It needs to have a difficulty changer. So if we want to play on Hall of Fame, play on the top tier level, you know, competitive stage, we can do that. Also, quarter length. I think that also should be adjustable. If I want to run quick one minute quarter games, I think that would be fun to run different tournaments, you know, like self tournaments or different things like that in the format of just make the quarters adjustable. At least bring them down to five minutes. I can't stand playing with friends online because the shots go in that are absolutely ridiculous because it's on an easier game mode. And it's it seems like it's twice as long. These games take like 45 minutes when they go to six minutes. So to make it easy enough, just make the difficulty either the same as my team online. Best case scenario, make them adjustable. Make it so I can go to Hall of Fame easy if I'm not at that skill level yet. I can drain it down to the easiest. If I'm a new player, I can take it down to the easiest difficulty. Also, if we can't get adjusted quarter lengths, just leave it at five minutes. I don't want to play longer with my friend because he's my buddy. Trust me, I want these games to go just as quick as the normal games. So I think those two things in adjustable quarters and adjustable difficulty would go a long way for play with friends. All right, now we're going to get into the content side of NBA 2K18 and what I hope to see this year in the my team mode um content was definitely upgraded this year they came out with a lot of new sets a lot of new cards probably doubled their card count as far as players and cards and different uh, themes that we got this year but could it have been done a little bit differently a little bit better absolutely nothing's perfect so it could definitely have some changes for this year that i feel like would be more effective now this first one's just a little one a little preference of mine black market either get rid of it or it's gotta have some more purpose I like the black market I think it's a cool idea but it just always every for the two years that it's been around it just kind of gets thrown it's just forgotten about it never really gets updated it's got a few little cool things in there as far as like the diamond contract the diamond ball you know I, I'm not sure if diamond shoe was in there or not but I know and it had like select little historic packs you could get but to me that's not enough to me, it's got to have some of like the diamond cards that weren't able to get in packs or said, you know, some rarity to the black market like they did in the year previous with like the diamond bird, the diamond Nash, you know, make different players in there or different items exclusive and have it change up every time you get in there. Not just, you know, every once in a while they update. It should be on this constant rotator, if at all possible, that's always providing new content. But one new item that I would like to see either in packs in general or in an exclusive like reward pack or even a black market pack is Hall of Fame badge pack. Now if they decide to bring back Hall of Fame badges, which I think they should, I think it was a major hit this year, definitely gave you a reason to want to go out and get certain cards that had these badges, get a Hall of Fame badge pack where it gives you one random Hall of Fame badge and you can add that to any player. Imagine if you pulled Hall of Fame limitless range and we're able to add that to the center i know granted it might get a little cheesy but i think that would still be pretty cool you can't complain and say that wouldn't be a cool item as long as it wasn't being able to where you could buy multiple packs where it'd be super abused and make posterizer and limitless range one of the super hard ones to get i think it could definitely be pretty cool and something some new content that we can see in this black market but staying on the content train we are gonna hop into reward cards and i'm gonna be pretty quick and easy with this one they made leaps and bounds from going from reward basketballs last year to actually getting really cool player cards this year i think it was a good move granted there was a problem with it and that is making the reward card unsellable and that is a problem i know in their eyes doesn't seem like a problem but it is and the reason why is right now there is not enough cards on the block as we are in dead season to get a lot of the actually most of the reward cards if i wanted to go and get the vince carter all-star card that released i think it was well it was around all-star season right around the all-star game i couldn't do it because there's not no, no more of the cards are in the packs there's no packs to get those cards for that set 
and frankly no one's putting cards on the market house to get that so how do i get that vince carter i can't it's over i missed my chance maybe that's something they want but to me that's just not effective if i wanted to use that card eventually at some time through the cycle in 2k i should be able to do that so how you do that you once you lock in the cards for the set they need to be discarded just like madden need to be deleted i'm not in for holding cards into the set if we're gonna make this like madden which everybody seems like they want to make it as close to madden's ultimate team as possible they need to adapt this or adopt this system with discarding cards and then making the reward card because then it gets rid of the cards that you need for the set so it still makes value for those cards needed for the set on the market but then when we get to dead season and the packs are gone for that set i don't have to rely on some random player putting up that one card i need for the set that's probably going to go for an astronomical amount because frankly it's one of the only cards out there that's still around and i can just go buy that vince carter if i want then I don't have to worry about looking for certain cards, but I like I said, they need to make it so the set discards or it's gonna kill the market value for any of the other cards wanted for that set. So easy enough, discard the cards that go into the set, get, make them so they delete, and then once you get the reward card, you can put it up on the auction house. And then if I wanna use that card later on or don't like that card anymore or didn't like it, then I still make some money, other people can buy it, and everyone still gets to use it staying on the content train here i am going to go into the next one with as far as the releasing of cards and the overall ratings of cards granted they did a great thing this year in adopting the system with the rating system that, that, that madden and some of the other ultimate team modes have done with starting with lower rated cards and then gradually building up i think it's the best method and way in containing and making sure that there's enough content in the future year as far as gr growing and making better cards as the player in the season goes on but i think that it was executed a little bit poorly unfortunately like i said these are no shots at 2k this is all constructive criticism um i i think it could have been done a little bit better and a perfect example 98 heat lebron james was released on the last week of the nba finals and they released curry and the the durant which the durant makes sense because he was the final he was the reward he was the he won the award for the finals mvp so it makes sense but why did we get 98 curry draymond green uh at the end of the year the last day of the finals what at what point do i need to have these players because i guarantee everybody at that point that seriously plays this game even the casual players should have been done with my team online at that point so again it goes back to the longevity question why do i need to have these good players once i beat my team online 2k is relying on us the content creators to either do wagers or other outside self-made tournaments in order to keep these monster teams which they don't even like wagers so that is something that you can actually goes against their eula and get you banned but yet it's something that we need as a community in order to make sure this game mode stays alive or else their pack sales goes down their money goes down and let's face it they wouldn't like that so i will get into wagers later but as far as the the release of the cards i just thought it was done a little bit poorly like i said how we got some of these top tier cards at the end of the year at almost dang near dead season just didn't make a lot of sense to me i think they rely on one term too much is overpowered they don't want to release overpowered cards too too soon so and it it hinders them from making multiple cards i think it was madden 16 and there will be few madden references in here i know that it's not the same game you know they haven't been working with ultimate team as i think this is their fourth or fifth year with ultimate team as far as my team is concerned in 2k so granted they're not on the same stage level as ea and what they're doing over there but it's the most comparable one it's because it seems like they're having the most success with their mode so what i think they need to do is they they don't need to be afraid of releasing multiple player card versions like i remember i think it was madden 16 that released like 12 demarco murray cards because he was a hot player that year that's fine because they were actually all different and unique in their own way where this year you could say that even though the player got an upgrade card was it really that unique was it really that big of an upgrade from its previous card it's questionable one of the perfect cards I use is, you know, uh, LeBron James from his Amethyst to his Diamond. Yes, he got, you know, a couple Hall of Fame badges, but most of his stats stayed the same. 
So there's got to either be leaps and bounds in stats and badges or it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Like why we couldn't have got like an 88 overall Ruby Heat card LeBron James at the start of the year. Like they can release different versions of players or cards and we'll be fine with it. Like we expect better cards to come out later on in the year. Why we couldn't have got like a Ruby 88 overall LeBron James Heat card. Gave it some decent shooting and some decent dunking. You know, I, I I don't know why. Like, you can make these different versions of cards, and they, I know what their main reasoning and what I've heard in the past that they're concerned about is they don't want people having overpowered teams from the get-go. And that makes sense, but in all reality, it's not about the players or cards that you have. It's about the person that's behind the sticks playing the game. Because I've ran into players that have had a lesser squad than me that have not had a god squad like me and maybe you know a mid-level tier team and they beat me because they are great at the game it's not about overpowered cards it's about who's behind playing the game and frankly i think they rely on that overpowered stuff too much so this year like i said they, they need to get some longevity in the game or i don't see the purpose of buying a lebron james card at the end of the year why are we buying packs so again it goes back to longevity it's just gotta happen Right, and this is this is one that is big for a lot of people, but not necessarily me because I have a different outlook on it. Is pack odds? They need to quit adjusting pack odds. Just go with it. Make it a decent amount. It shouldn't be crazy. Uh, granted, I know you need people to buy packs and spend money on this game. You guys are a business. I think a lot of people forget that. 2K is not in the business of just making their customers happy, but they also need to make money. They need to make money. If you were one running a business, you gotta remember that you would wanna make money as much as possible while keeping your customers happy, which they are making a lot of money, but customers are not necessarily happy at this point because the pack odds are so bad. At one point in the year, they were actually really good. At different parts of the year, they were actually really good. However, they toned them back down and to a degree that a lot of people don't like. So set it at a meter. We need some consistency with this. Set it at a decent meter. You shouldn't have to go through, you know, $100 worth of coins and not get at least a decent card. Make it so it's decent. Just decent. I don't need it to be super pullable because, like I said, I always use this example. How cool is a Ferrari if everybody's got one? You know, how cool is the LeBron Heat card if everybody's got one? It's, it's got to have some sort of rarity to it. It's got to be hard to pull. That's what makes the card cool. That's what gives its appeal. And I think a lot of people forget that. I mean, not everyone wants to, because then we, if everyone can get it, then it's not that cool when you see it on a team. It doesn't have that ooh-ah factor. And then frankly, you're facing every time you go up on a My Team Online, online team, a God Squad, which is also a problem that they want to avoid. So set them at a decent meter. They, they need to be decent. I mean, I shouldn't have to spend $200 and still not get anything. I mean, it's got to be around the $100 mark you get a good card. And I know that still might be, I, you know, I know that's high. But they also need to make money. And like I said, they got to make sure that the cards stay rare. So there's got to be, you know, there's got to be some give and some, you know, there's got to be a little leeway there for it. I know a lot of people will be like, $100? What? Are you serious? That's so much money and I only get one good card. But yet, at the end of the day, they got to make sure that these cards stay rare again good is a Lamborghini and what kind of appeal does it really have if everybody's driving one so I do think they need to make some consistency do not change the pack odds set them at a decent pace that you guys think is good and everyone feels good about and then leave them leave them that's all I got to say about pack odds all right this next topic is gonna be short and brief I'm not gonna go over it too much because Frankly, it's a controversial topic, and it's the trade block. I know I was going to hear about it if I didn't mention it, and I'm not for it. I'm sorry, guys. I can't support you on this one for the trade block. I just think there's so many other things as far as longevity they need to focus on, and I know our community is savage as heck that they would take advantage of this. And frankly, I get so many messages from people being scammed already. Imagine if we added a trade block. Well, this kid said he was gonna borrow my LeBron James and give it right back, but now he's blocked me and now he's got the card forever. Yeah, not gonna happen, not good. I just don't think that they need to focus on that right now. I think there's other modes that they, they really need to focus on the longevity of the game. And then we can work on different things like training on down the line. But for me right now, 
training's just not one of them. It's not gonna help the mode. I see it being more abused than helpful. I just can't be a part of it and I can't support it right now. All right, moving on to one of the last topics here is a mode that I hope is in the game mode next year is wager mode. Wager mode, oh man, they already have stage in the game. We already have a gambling game mode in the game. So when people say, oh, they couldn't implement it because it's gambling, it would move the game rating from E to teen to mature, whatever it would move it up. There's already a gambling mode in the game. It's called stage. So why we couldn't do that for my team, I don't know. But they need to make it effective. They need to make sure it wasn't abused. And I think the best way to be able to do that would be to stick to VC, to be honest. But it doesn't have to be crazy amounts. Just put like a 10,000, a 20,000, and a 30,000 in there, or even a 50,000. Go from 10 to 50,000 that you can wager on. Make sure that it says, are you sure you want to wager 50,000 against so-and-so? Different things like that. Make sure that, you know, it's fair and, you know, hopefully that doesn't get abused. I There's got to be a way to reprimand that to where if it's getting abused, then, you know, you can say, there's got to be a way that they need to monitor it. And I'm sure there is a way because if they can do it with stage, I don't see why they couldn't do it with my team. But definitely a wager mode. It's got to happen because, frankly, it'll also keep a way to get the game longevity wise again i go back to that word longevity it would keep the game out lasting longer and it would want to have a reason to keep having packs being open to keep building your team all right guys another mode i gotta jump on real quick and address because i know i'll get it in the comments if i don't is draft mode it's just not another mode i can support guys because why if they don't do it correctly then it'll become as stale as blacktop and just as fast and what I'm talking about is, and Blacktop is a draft mode, guys. It really is. It just chooses the draft for you. Frankly, guys, let's say you can choose your team. You got JJ Barea, you got uh, Ricky Rubio, and then in the middle, you got Jeremy Lin. You can choose from those three starting point guards. It's not going to be as lit as everybody seems to think it's going to be, unless they go the route where they're creating multiple versions of cards pretty dang quickly like i know what you guys are thinking well madden it's super fun fifa it's super fun and you can pull certain drafts yes but that mode gets boring fast without what a leaderboard the reason people play that and it's such a success is because there's also a leaderboard and a good system that goes along with it without the leaderboard i promise you it would get just as stale as you guys seem to think gauntlet slash blacktop is right now but right now, like I said, without adding some type of leaderboard or great reward system with it, I can't support the draft mode. All right, last topic that I'm going to go over here is summer content. Dead season. We should never have it. Why aren't we getting the packs from past sets like the all-star set packs? Why aren't we getting deep suitor two packs? Why aren't they still releasing old packs? Granted, it's pointless now because, like I said, without reason to play my team online why do you need those cards i don't know but at least it's content at least it's something to do i mean one thing i think that they kind of dropped the ball on was the olympic cards as far as they gave us the dream team diamonds and they gave us those sapphire cards but what about those sapphire cards in a diamond version we couldn't have got a usa team diamond set from those sapphire cards into their greater later version I definitely think that's something that they kind of forgot about and maybe dropped the ball on as far as the Olympic content. I definitely thought that we were going to see eventually diamond, ver ruby, diamond, amethyst versions of those USA players. And we could have even gone into different USA teams. What about redeem team Kobe? What about that redeem team LeBron James? What about dream team two cards? Shaq. Team, Scotty Pippen. I mean, there is content that we could be doing right now with these summer events and Olympics. This is usually the event that takes place during summer. And they could be dropping it all right now, but in the meantime, I know they need to work on the game. That's something I know that they're going to, you know, if they were to say it right in front of me and say, you know, we're working on next year's game, that's great, but how do we promote next year's game if we don't have anything to do in the current game? How do, if I had an Olympic pack to be opening right now and say, oh, and did you hear that they dropped the new images for 2K18 today while I opened that pack? But no, we have no content to release right now for this current game. So how do I promote the next game without having something currently to do in this game? I think it's something that they definitely need to focus on. And it all goes back to the main word, longevity. 
All right, guys, that is going to wrap up my NBA 2K18 My Team wish list. Again, I went, I'm sorry it was a little bit longer video. I had to make some crucial points and things that I wanted, you know, messages I wanted to get across about certain things. And it took a little bit longer than expected. And again, this is all my opinion. I know you guys are not going to agree with me on everything. Frankly, I don't expect you to. Everyone's got their own voice, their own opinion, things they want to see in their own My Team, and that's fine. I'm good okay with that. You guys can want whatever you want. Like I said, this is for me just made the most sense of what I feel would make a night, uh, you know, a long lasting 2K18 game mode. I know you guys are gonna fight me on the trading and the draft mode. Like I said, without the draft mode having a leaderboard, I just see it getting as stale as the gauntlet and blacktop has in the past years. And then trading, like I said, I feel like it would just take them too long where they could be focusing on more longevity side of it. We're trading. Like I said, I just see there being more problems and success with it as far as exploits. And especially with the way our community handles exploits. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I put a lot of time and effort into writing down and making sure that I got every single thing and idea that I wanted to see for the game mode next year across. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave the video a thumbs up. And if you're new, welcome. There's more videos coming. Don't worry about that. We're still pumping them out. So hit the subscribe button if you're new. And Richie Nation, party on.